Hello everyone and welcome to Werven's World. Today I would like to give you five tips for new players of Tome, also known as Tales of Majijal, or however you pronounce it. Um, Tome is a roguelike, which means that basically if you die you lose everything and you have to start again and the world is pretty much procedurally generated and basically you level up your character and you kill a lot of monsters, collect a lot of loot and hopefully uh, fill the main quest but normally you will die instead um, and the game is fairly complex as you can see here I've got a lot of skills here on my bar and they're not even everything you've got a lot of statistics you've got a lot of skill trees and class points and category points and generic points and stat points so in general the game is fairly complex so I thought I would give uh, five tips uh, in order to well help you get started with this game so here we go tip number one is to use the autocast feature of this game it's really handy to use if you right click on an ability um, you can see all these auto use options whenever it's available, whenever no enemies are visible, whenever enemies are visible and whenever enemies are visible and adjacent to you. So um, this is extremely handy to cut down on the micromanagement and to make sure uh, spells get cast that need to get cast. So whenever combat starts for example I've got my mucus ability. I'm a Oozmancer and my mucus basically creates a lot of slime around me that poisons enemies and it allows other slimes to spawn and all that kind of stuff and I basically always always want to cast it, especially because it's an instant spell so it doesn't take a turn to cast. So this one I just have on auto use when enemies are visible. I also have mosses that basically create AoE around me with uh, nice effects and I also have those on auto use. Um, furthermore I've got some sustained talents, for example wild growth and mitosis and psi blades. However for example psi blades and mitosis cost a turn to use and I basically uh, put it on auto use when no enemies are visible. That means that basically whenever I'm not in combat it makes sure that it's activated as you can see here. Um, but if it accidentally gets turned off during combat due to for example stuns or something then I need to recast it myself. The reason for this is that this thing costs a turn to use. So if I get stunned and the game decides for me it wants to cast Psyblades, it I lose a turn. Uh, and that turn I might for example wanted to have healed because I would be on low health and because it then casts Psy Blades I will die. Uh, so just to keep in control of, of those things because they take a turn to cast I have them on auto use when no enemies are visible. But of course that means that I need to pay attention if I still have them during combat. Um, so I can show this. I just Here now I found an enemy. Uh, actually I found the boss here, <laughs> Kelad, uh, and immediately um, I cast a mucus and one of the mosses is cast. So it's really handy, now I just don't need to think about all those things. So I can just start my combat uh, with all the spells that I will need already activated. So make sure to um, think about your abilities, about your sustained abilities and your instant abilities and think about if you would like to have them on autocast in order to automate the game a bit for you. Tip number two is know about how armor hardiness works. So if you go to your defense tab in your character sheet, you see armor and armor hardiness. And in my case, I have eight armor and 30% armor hardiness. So what does that mean? Well, armor hardiness is a very interesting stat. It basically means that whenever a um, enemy attacks me, I can only block 30% of that damage with my armor. So let's say they do 100 damage. Then with my armor hardiness, 70 damage will always go through because I cannot stop it. I can only stop 30% of that damage. Um, then we start looking at my armor. So let's say they do 100 damage. I stop 30% of that with my armor, but my armor is only 8. So while I could block 30% of the damage I actually only block 8 damage so that means that from the 100 70 damage already goes through and then from the 30 damage that I can block I only block 8 so basically 22 damage still gets through so 70 plus 22 is basically 92 damage still gets through what if I have 5000 armor and 30% 
hardiness. Well, then they would do 100 damage, 70% still gets through. Um, my 30 damage that doesn't go through is blocked by my 5000 armor, but then I would still get 70 damage. So you can have as much armor as you want, but if you don't have a lot of armor hardiness, um, well, then you won't be blocking a lot of damage. So, uh, how can you increase it? Well, it's fairly hard to increase, but for example, there are things like uh, armor training that can uh, improve your armor hardiness. It's under technique combat training. And there's also some items, for example, here I've got this um, shield here, Titanic, that would give me armor hardiness of 20%. So, balancing your armor with your armor hardiness is a very good thing to do. Um, because if you have tons of armor but almost no armor hardiness, you still will be getting a lot of damage from melee and archery attacks. Tip number three is be very, very careful about stuns. Uh, stuns are one of the most dangerous status effects in the game. And uh, what they do is they don't only reduce your damage, but they also put talents on cooldown and they won't let your other, other talents go off cooldown anymore. So as you can see here, I have just been stunned for 8 turns uh, by one attack and I've also been uh, confused, so that's the, why the image is so blurry. Um, and as you can see, um, this here, my Aura of Silence and my Leaves Tide, as well as my Slime Roots, have all been put on cooldown even though I haven't used them. Um, so that's bad enough. However, the problem is also uh, one of my main attacks, my Slime Spit, uh, will not cool down for 8 turns because um, I'm stunned for 8 turns. And uh, any ability that is already on a cooldown will not cool down during the stun. So um, this is very, very dangerous if you have stacking stuns. So let's see the, let's say there were more monsters um, that were attacking me and stunning me. Then within no time my entire bar would be on cooldown and I couldn't use any skills anymore. Uh, and those skills include, for example, my healing skills and my teleportation skill, for example. All those things would basically be able to be on cooldown and I couldn't do anything anymore. Then I could try to fight my way out, however, I do 60% less damage. So it's really, really dangerous to, have to be stunned. Um, so what can you do about it? Well. Um, as you can see here, you have a wild infusion, which uh, it says um, activate you to cure yourself of one, uh, of one random physical effect. And uh, if you hover over stun, you can see that it's physical stun. So if I click on this, I will not be stunned anymore. Um, but I first want to show you that my skills don't go on cooldown. So let's say I activate my regeneration. I can't because I'm confused as well. And you can see here, now I already passed two turns, but these things are still not on cooldown. Now my um, confusion finally wore off, so now I can activate my uh, regeneration. And uh, now this one has a 15 turn cooldown. Let's say I also want to have a critical hit, and I am going to just, I don't know, blast it. There. All these things are already on the cooldown, and they're not. The cooldown is not getting less, and my stun is still one sec, uh, one turn. So it's okay in this uh, in this case because I'm not surrounded by a lot of enemies that that can really damage me uh, just by one. Um, so, but you can see how this can go very wrong very quickly. So, what can you do? Well, I can uh, get rid of it with my infusion wild because it gets rid of it gets rid of physical effects. So, if I click on it you see the stun is gone, so from now on these things will go on cooldown again, unless I get stunned again. But you can also uh, stack a thing called stun immunity. For example, here in my amulet, you can see that I have pinning immunity and knockback immunity. Uh, I don't have any stun immunity yet, uh, but there's items that give you stun immunity as well as some skills uh, that help you with it and some sh skills that allow you to shake off a stun, for example. So be really, really careful with stuns, especially later in the game when stuns are, well, they're all around and uh, you will die because of them. So be really careful with them. Tip number four is always be on the lookout for better infusions and runes. So infusions and runes really make the difference between life and death. Um, for example, here I've got one that dispels a mental effect and reduces damage taken by 24% for 5 turns. I've got a regeneration rune, I've got a movement rune which makes me very fast, I've got a heroism rune which allows me to go below zero health for a while, as well as increasing some of my stats. 
and uh, all in all they really help out when you're in a pinch. Um, so the fun thing about them is that they differ a lot in power. For example here my current regeneration rune gives me 681 life over 5 turns and my previous one gave me 454 over 5 turns. So it's a difference of 200 health over 5 turns which is a lot. So um, upgrading those infusions is really important. So how do you do that? Well you can just um, click on them and click on use. And then you can see uh, which one you want to overwrite and click on it and then you will have the new infusion. At the moment I don't want to overwrite any because I'm happy with the ones I have. Um, you can find them, you can find new ones that are, uh, might be upgrades or not, but you can also check shops. For example here there is a shop that sells some runes and here's a shop that sells some infusions. However, for example here the regeneration infusion is not better than what I have so I won't buy it. But you can always shop around and maybe find a good upgrade. So that's uh, very important. Uh, normally you can only have three of these infusions. However, um, sometimes while leveling you gain a category point. And category points are used for a couple of things. For example, increasing the efficiency of your spells, uh, unlocking new um, uh, trees of skills but you can also unlock uh, another inscription slot so I did that once now so I can actually have four inscriptions instead of having three um, and as you can see here when I click on inscriptions you can still learn one new slot but you need a category point so if I get in another category point I could put it into inscriptions and take another um, inscription slot so then I could have five. So always be on the lookout for them because uh, finding a um, good regeneration rune that regenerates you six to seven hundred health instead of for example here this one that only regenerates you 183 really will make the difference between life and death. Tip number five is watch out for vaults and chests, especially if you don't know what's behind them. Uh, this game works in such a way that everything is fairly balanced, but if you run into a door that says the door seems to have been sealed off, you think you can open it, think twice before you actually do it. Uh, there are a couple of these vaults in the game and as far as I know they're always the same. Um, and Basically it's up to you, well from experience, to know what's happening, but uh, whenever you see it they are probably fairly difficult. So it might be better uh, to first get a couple of levels and then come back. Um, a big exception is here the Vault in Vor Armory. Um, if I open this, I am now level 34, there are a couple of dragons here and I think they're level 90. So even though this area itself didn't prove that much of a problem, it was fairly hard, but it was okay, um, this vault is basically just unbeatable. So if you open the door and you get practically immediately killed, that's not much fun. So be careful of vaults, think twice before you open it, and the same happens to chests as well. Throughout the game you will find golden chests, and some of them will give you items, and other will spawn uh, either a lot of enemies or a very special enemy, and that special enemy can be fairly tough. So if you're having some troubles in the level anyway, then don't open those chests and vaults. Come back later when you're a bit stronger. So those were the five tips of Tome. I hope you enjoyed them, I hope it improves your play and if you have any questions feel free to ask here and I'll try to do my best to answer them. So I hope you find it useful and see you next time!